Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk a little bit about one of the things I struggle with the most when it comes to art is a lot of times I run into where it's time to start working on a piece but I don't know what to draw and I just cannot come with a, up with an idea and I'll jump from one to the next to another and just none of them really sit well with me. None of them are exciting and I can't quite picture them. I can't make a good idea come to my head even based on any concept that comes to mind. So ultimately I feel really frustrated because I can't start a piece because I don't have an idea. And I found that the one thing that fixes it for me immediately is that I just make myself use one idea, period. I know that sounds really simple and kind of a dumb suggestion really, but it's the only thing that's really gotten me out of this mode where I can't move forward out of that rut. And there are a lot of great ways to give yourself better ideas and a lot of great ways to get more inspiration and concepts in your head. But when it's time to draw and I just can't draw, this is the only way that will make me have the motivation to make it happen. So when I have a thing that I absolutely have to draw, like this one, I'll talk about this piece in particular, I I needed to draw something and I was in that, that mode where I was just going from one to the next and I was looking at a bunch of artists and art references and I was just spending so much time being frustrated at myself for not coming up with this great idea right off the bat. And I had someone suggest to me, okay, well, maybe you should do a piece that's inspired by noir, um, film noir. So it has very deep shadows. It has a mystery to it. It's very 40s, 1940s kind of feel to it. And I was in that mode where I'd think, okay, yeah, that's kind of a good idea. I can think about it for a little bit. And then I would move on. And that's when it hit me that... <laughs> That was my problem. I wasn't settling down on something to make it work. And that's usually my issue is that I can make something work with pretty much anything. And it's so much better to have something done than nothing. And I was spending so much time producing nothing that it was making me feel worse and more desperate. So once I came to that realization and said, okay, I'm going to treat this like an assignment. I'm going to take this concept and I'm going to create a piece for it, period. No more jumping to the next idea, no more thinking that nothing is going to work and I just can't figure it out because this is an assignment and I'm going to make it work. And once I just forced myself to live with that, it really started helping me get the ball rolling. Now it wasn't perfect. It really did struggle with this piece in a lot of ways, but I feel so much better with it, with the fact that it is here and that I did create it and that I made a piece. So this is actually something that, like I said, I struggle with this a lot. There's probably a lot of artists that they feel like they have so many ideas all the time and they make amazing pieces and they never feel like they have no ideas, but I have no ideas all the time. And I'm trying really hard to pay attention to the things that help me feel more inspired and have more, more imagery in my head naturally. So when it comes time to draw a new thing, I have more sources to draw from. But when it comes down to it, it's really just forcing myself to make something, period, that will make me draw. That's the only thing. That's the last line of defense against unproductivity for me. And going beyond that, the thing is, is that I actually find it really exciting for the most part, having to work with something that I don't get to change, having those defining things that that force you into this certain box it allows you to think about all these other things that you can be doing and it frees you up in a lot of ways i remember that's one of the things that i actually really loved the most about school is that we had these assignments and in a lot of my classes particularly the ones that focus a little bit more conceptually is that they also had these requirements for what the piece would be, the concept, not just how we're executing it. And those were my favorite assignments. I felt so creatively charged. It, it gave me something to work around and to see how far I could bend it and what things I can push that really exemplify that concept, but also make it my own. And, and having these restraints just really gives me a lot of forward momentum with a piece. It's kind of like that, um, there's a saying about like, the kite, where if you take off that string, you take off that, that thing that's binding it down to the earth, it wouldn't be able to fly anymore. So I think having restraints in art like that, giving yourselves requirements, it really helps 
me at least, be able to work on pieces and move forward with that. Now, I do not mean that this will solve all your problems, that once you have this thing that you have to draw, that it's going to fix all your problems. It won't. <laughs> Um, a lot of times I do feel more inspired by it. Like when I do the YouTube artist collective pieces where I have to make it fit with that theme. So those are some of my favorite pieces, but sometimes I just, I am out of the mood to draw this one in particular. I don't know what it was. I was in a weird art mood where I just was dragging my feet with this painting. It took me probably twice as long as it normally would have because I was just putting it off and I would do a little bit and then step away from it. And that's okay, because if I didn't have that thing where I was forcing myself, one, to meet a deadline, and two, to meet this criteria, the, the film noir theme, I wouldn't have made anything. I know that. I period. I just wouldn't have had anything. So it's okay to accept the fact that, that sometimes you're not always going to enjoy the process, or you're not always going to love the piece, but making something is always better than not making anything. That's a mantra that I have that I'm trying to remember and I'm trying to repeat it to myself is that I would rather create something that isn't perfect, isn't the most inspired thing, isn't the thing that gets me the most excited about creating new pieces, but I'd rather have it than nothing. And a lot of times it comes down to that's my choice. I have either nothing or I have something and maybe it's not the best, but it's something. So, so I feel good about this one that I got done. I, I'm feeling, I think probably a lot of my um, lack of forward momentum on this piece is coming from the fact that I'm, I'm ready to level up, I think, in a lot of my skills. I think I'm, I'm ready to pay attention to a few things that, that I am excited to work on, like my actual watercolor skills. Working on this one, I, it reminded me how much I loved when I was first learning watercolors and learning these techniques and just putting my all into figuring it out. And it, it gave me the realization that there's a lot of techniques in watercolor that I have not mastered and a lot of things that I just have, I don't even know of. I have no concept of how to create that. So I'm putting myself on the path of this new discovery of watercolors to learn new things and to seek out new classes that I can take, whether it's locally in person or online. So that's really going to be something that's going to help motivate me moving into the next pieces from here on out is having these things that I'm learning and building and getting better at. But if you're trying this technique of forcing yourself to create a piece based on a theme, there are a lot of sources that you can find to help yourself decide on what you're going to do. You can ask someone if you trust them and you like their ideas. You can also look up different lists online. There are so many lists for different challenges, art challenges. Right now it's actually a mermaid. So a lot of people are creating mermaids. So you could take that and just say, okay, you know what? I'm going to sit down and I will draw a mermaid. It doesn't matter what it ends up looking like, but if it's a mermaid, then that's a box that's checked off. I've accomplished that. And you just have to force yourself to take one and go with it rather than to keep looking for the perfect idea and not letting yourself start. I, um, I'm really excited to go find some, some challenge concepts and some lists. Like for Inktober, there's so many different lists for each day of a type of art to draw a type of concept. I think that that'll be really good for me is that I can go in there and find those on days like this where I'm really struggling to come up with a concept and I can just find something. And the first one that I think, oh, that's kind of a good idea. That's the one, that's the one I'll have to make. And I can, I can really push that and I can take that and I think think that that will will help me push myself out of my own boundaries. I can think of new things rather than just the same automatic ones because I'm trying to fit someone else's concept and someone else's idea rather than fitting my own ideas and concepts that I, I like to recycle and revisit. But I'd love to know if any of you guys have suggestions of what do you like to do when you just have no idea on what to draw? What is that tried and true thing that helps you actually create and actually make something happen? It's something that it took me a lot of years to really figure out what I can reliably make happen. And I'm still struggling with it. So any new ideas is always very welcome. But, but yeah, I... I am ready and excited to go down this new path of recommitting myself to, to learning the techniques that I want and, and learning what concepts I want to draw more of. That's kind of this never ending quest, but, but all these things combined, it just, 
And it's making me feel a little bit more excited about where I'm going rather than very stuck, which is not a good feeling in art. And that is it for today. If you'd like to own this original painting or prints of her, I have links down in the description. They'll take you to my art shop. I also have a link to my Patreon and I do want to give a really quick, huge thank you to all my patrons over there. You guys all help make this channel happen and all the artwork that I get to do. So thank you so much for that. Uh, and I also have a link to my PO box that is current and up to date for where I now live down there as well. But that's it for today. So I'll be back next Wednesday with another video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then.